Welcome back. Have you ever wondered how characters are animated in games? Well, today we're going to be going over basic 2D rigging system, which will make animation infinitely easier than doing it by keyframe animation. So the first step is to set up your character. I set up my characters like this. So I have my characters broken up into the pieces that I want to move set out on a document. You do want to make sure that your document has transparency enabled and then you just export it and bring it into Unity. So I'm over in Unity. I'm going to import my asset. So I'm going to go to my art folder. I'm going to import new asset. I'm going to select my art file. And then we need to manipulate some of our settings. So this one right here is our guy. We want to set, make sure it is on Sprite 2D and UI. It is set to single and your pixels per unit, you can manipulate this if you wish. I'm gonna do 1024, so it's gonna be high resolution. And then we're gonna click this Sprite Editor button. I'm gonna hit apply. Do note this is a 2D project. If you do not start off with a 2D project, you will have to import the packages needed for this. Uh, those packages are 2D Sprite Editor and uh, rigging, I believe. I'll pull them up right now. So those packages are 2D Animation, 2D IK, and 2D Sprite. The rest of these should already be in that you need. If you're using Photoshop, you can use the 2D PSD importer. However, the process I'll be going through works no matter what art program you use, as I like to use Affinity over Photoshop. So now that our Sprite Editor is open, you can see our sprite. Now, how do we get him reassembled? Well, first we have to rig him. This is a process of essentially creating a skeleton that we will pair to each of his body elements so that when the skeleton moves, the body moves with it. So we're gonna switch down here from this drop down in the top left to our skinning editor. Now we're going to double click. This will just select that this is the particular sprite we wanna work on. We're gonna click create bone and your cursor is gonna to change to this red circle where you can draw bones. If you do not see it, make sure to double click and you will be able to see it. I like to start off my first bone as like a pelvis or hip bone. So I'm going to put that at his base. Then I'm going to click to add some more bones to his body. You can right click to disconnect a bone select a bone to make it its parent and you can now see that i've got this green connector this faded green connection this means that this bone that i place is going to be a child of the selected bone but it will not be directly connected to it so for the head i'm just going to move up to here and set it up like that so my torso is going to start down here near the pelvis then i've got the top half of his body his lower head, and then his upper head. Down here in the bottom where it says name, you can rename them. I do advise naming your bones, so it'll make it a lot easier. You can do this at the end if you wish. So I'm gonna attach his arms to his torso. Arms, I like to have at least three bones in each arm. The reason for this is if you're using an IK system, it requires at least three bones to calculate correctly. What this means is if I move the wrist, the rest of the arm will move with the wrist naturally. However, if you don't wish to use IK, you do not have to do so. So I will set up the legs just like a normal bone. After you do this process, we can switch to our edit bone, or you can come up here to this visibility and you can and open it up and you can see all of our bones here. And these drop downs signify their parenting. I like to go through and name all my bones. So I'm going to name this bone and go down here in the lower right. I'm going to name this pelvis. Then I'll name the next one up, upper torso, and so on and so forth. It is standard to name left and right, not based off of your art, but based off the character's perspective. So this arm is going to go on the side facing the player. This would be the character's right arm, so we name it right arm. Once you have named everything, our next step is to go to this Auto Geometry tab. This is going to divide our art up into polygons, which we'll use to assign which area of our art belongs to which bone. 
I recommend turning our outline detail all the way up to 100, keeping the alpha tolerance at 10, and increasing our subdivisions. You will have more accurate bends the higher your subdivisions are. I'm gonna hit generate for a select. This weights checkbox is gonna automatically weigh things. So now we're gonna see all the polygons. We're also gonna see colors representing our bones. What these colors mean is how much of each bone is influencing the area. The reason why I separated things was for that very purpose. So I want this top bone if you notice, when I rotate it now, you can see how the art will respond to it. This entire area is this light blue color, meaning only this bone has influence and it has 100% influence on it. Whereas my green one only affects the green one. But because of the parent-child relationship, if I move my green bone, my teal bone will also move as well. When you have two bones in a section, you can see that it divides up which bone influences which part. So you can see if I bend forward here, see how the character's art warps to work with you. There's always going to be a point where if you have too sharp of a curve, things aren't gonna look correct. There's things you can do to mitigate it, namely adjusting how much of influence each thing has. If you notice some of these points right here in the middle, have a blend so it's an orange color it's not red or yellow it's orange meaning both bones affect that point a little bit if you go over here to auto white weights or your weight brush you can see these points right here you can select a bone and then paint to turn it into that you just have to adjust the hardness so if i switch this to 100 see how now these bones down here are now all yellow so if i rotate this bone those vertices are gonna rotate with it. I don't want that, I like it more smooth, so I'm gonna leave it more smooth. After you get it to how you want it, I'm satisfied with the automatic settings for this, I'm going to hit apply. You can add in extra vertices and edges if you want to get it precisely the way you want it to be. It's recommended to take a lot of time doing that for the purpose of this example, I'm not gonna do that. It's just adds in geometry like say, you wanted to smooth out this bend right here, you could add in some more vertices so that it bends smoother. We're gonna hit apply, then we're gonna exit, and then we're gonna drag our art into our game. So I believe this is the correct one. I'm gonna drag it in. And my guy is very small because of that resolution option I selected. So it's gonna be very high detail. If you notice, he's all divided. How do we fix him? It's quite simple. We need to add a sprite skin component to him and now we're gonna hit create bones and it's gonna add all the bones that we made then what we need to do you can see from our hierarchy here we have all of our bones we're going to move our bones around to reassemble our character so I'm gonna move this part over here and move this part down rotate this part a little bit and if you notice there's some weird clipping stuff going on don't worry about that. We will be able to fix that quite easily. So I've got my character more or less assembled. It's not perfect, but it'll work. You can tweak your rotation numbers here for a more smoother rotation, if you wish. So after I do this, I'm going to want to go back into that sprite editor and we need to modify our depth. This is how things stack. So I know that I want, if I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna just keep my body at zero and move things in relationship to that. So my right limbs need to be a number higher than zero. So I'm going to have my right shoulder be an order of two. We're gonna do this for all of our parts that are on the right side, so my foot as well. However, I want my left stuff to be behind, so I'm gonna set those to negative two. My lower head is supposed to be behind my guy, so I'm gonna set this one to negative one, and I'm gonna put my upper head on positive one. I'm gonna hit apply, and this will resolve our issues with our character. If you notice, we don't have any popping. Now we do have a little bit of artifacting here. This is part of the leg bleeding through, so we might have to mess with the values a little bit more. But first, I'm gonna rearrange them, and then we will address what needs to be addressed. So what is happening here is the leg is at two and the arm is at two. So I want to change this leg, this right foot to be at one. 
And I'm going to do the same thing for the left foot, putting that at negative one. And then I hit apply. I did those on my other window. That's why you didn't see that change happen. But you can see here that that correctly dealt with that issue. And now we have a rigged character set up and ready to animate. In order to animate it, it's quite simple. All we have to do is select our character, create a new animation track. I'm just going to do rigged idle and we'll make a fast idle animation. So let's say we want our guy to bob up and down. So I'm going to hit my record button right here. I go into this more in depth in an animation video. I'll post that up above. I'm going to start off with my guy being down a little bit. If you notice, because I move my pelvis, everything is connected to the pelvis. So everything moves at once. Then let's rotate his head a little bit. So I can zoom in a bit and rotate it. I'm looking at my scene view to get the rotation how I want. This will be the start of his animation. We'll rotate his arm a little bit. Oops, I hit two. And then we will move his arm back a little bit. Left shoulder is fine. I don't need to change that. Right foot is fine and left foot is fine. Then we'll go forward in our animation and we'll just move him a bit. So I'm gonna move this back, I'm gonna move this bone, I'm gonna move this bone a little bit, I'm gonna move this bone up here, and then this bone, rotate this bone, select him, come over here, and we can now see in our animation, he moves. So this will allow us to animate him. In the next video, I'm gonna go over setting up an IK rig so that we can make his arm movements look a little bit more natural. I hope you found this video interesting. Please comment below if you have any questions. Hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you in the next one.